In this lesson, we're going to learn about identifying intervals where functions are increasing, decreasing, or constant when that function has arrows. In part one of this lesson, we learned how to identify intervals where functions were increasing, decreasing, or constant. If you need to review that, be sure to go back to review part one of this video first. Let's begin with an example. Here we have the graph of a function. We want to identify the intervals where the function is increasing, decreasing, and constant. Let's begin by inspecting the graph. Place your finger on the graph and follow it along from left to right. Notice in the beginning that the graph is increasing. It's going upward. Then it changes direction at the turning point and begins to decrease or go downward. This graph is a little bit different from those that we've seen previously in that there are arrows at the ends of it. Remember what those arrows mean. Those arrows indicate that the graph continues endlessly in those directions. So the interval of increase is actually much larger than it first appeared, and the interval of decrease is also much larger than it first appeared. When you have arrows on the ends of your graph, the first thing you want to do is go on to your x-axis, put a negative infinity on the left-hand side, and a positive infinity on the right-hand side. Those will be very important in a few moments. Now, let's begin by answering the first question. Over what interval or intervals of x is the function increasing? Look at the graph and identify where the function is increasing. It's increasing on this interval here. Now, we draw our line so that we can see where the interval begins and ends. Very clearly, the interval ends here at the blue line. But where does it begin on the left-hand side? The reality is the graph continues in that direction forever. It goes toward negative infinity. If I focus only on that portion of the graph and I look down at the x-axis, I see the part of the x-axis that is visible is from negative infinity up to two. Therefore, the interval where the function is increasing is from negative infinity to two. You could write that using interval notation, as you see here, or using a simple inequality. The inequality would be x is less than 2. Now, let's look at the second question. Over what intervals of x is the function decreasing? Once again, we look at our graph. We see the function is decreasing over here. We use the blue line so that we can identify where the interval begins and ends. It begins when x is 2. But where does it end on the right-hand side? Well, we have an arrow on the right-hand side, which means the graph goes in that direction forever toward positive infinity. If we focus only on that part of the graph and we look down at the x-axis, we see that the graph is decreasing starting at 2 and going to positive infinity. We can write that using interval notation as 2 comma infinity or as a simple inequality saying x is greater than 2. The third question asks over what interval of x is the function constant. We examine the graph and see that that never happens, and so the answer is none. And now you have found the intervals of increase and decrease for a graph that contains arrows. Let's look at another example. On this example, we have a graph that first increases, then decreases, and then increases again. We notice that there are arrows on the end, which means we have to write our negative infinity and positive infinity on the x-axis. Now we want to identify the intervals of increase, decrease, and where the function is constant. Let's see if you can do that. Please pause the video here and come back when you're ready to compare answers. Let's compare answers. First, we want to know over what intervals of x the function is increasing. We see that that happens in two locations on the graph. Let's look at them one at a time. We begin by drawing our blue line to help us identify that interval. We see that the first section stops increasing at negative 2. But where does it begin on the left? Well, we have an arrow on the left, which means the interval goes to the left forever toward negative infinity. We now look at the x-axis and see that we have from negative infinity to negative 2 as the interval where the graph is increasing. So we can write that using interval notation 
or as an inequality. Now we have to look at the second location on the graph. We again draw a blue line to see where the interval begins, and then we have to decide where the interval ends. There's an arrow on the right-hand side of the graph, so this interval continues forever toward positive infinity. If we focus only on that portion of the graph and look at the x-axis, we see that the function is increasing from 3 to positive infinity. We can write that using interval notation 3 comma infinity or a simple inequality x is greater than 3. Now we've identified the intervals where the function is increasing. The second question asks over what intervals of x is the function decreasing. We see that that happens in this location on the graph and so we draw our blue guidelines. This time we have a starting spot and an ending spot. We focus on that section of the graph and look at the x-axis, negative 2 to positive 3. We write that as our interval where the function is decreasing, either using interval notation, negative 2 comma 3, or a single compound inequality, negative 2 is less than x is less than 3. Now we're ready to answer our final question. Over what intervals of x is the function constant? We look at the graph and look for that flat horizontal section where the graph would be constant, but it does not appear anywhere. There are no places where this function is constant, and so the answer to question 3 is simply none. Now we're ready for another example. Here we have the graph of a function. We want to find the intervals where the function is increasing, decreasing, and constant. We begin by tracing across the graph with our finger from left to right. At first, the graph is decreasing. Then we hit a turning point and we change direction. The graph then begins to increase. We notice at the end of the graph we have arrows. That means that we have to add our negative infinity and positive infinity to the graph because this graph continues forever. Now we can answer the questions. Question 1. Over what intervals of x is the function increasing? Look at the graph and identify where the function is increasing. It's increasing over here. We draw our blue guidelines. The first guideline is very easy to draw in. But where do we draw the second guideline? Well, we have an arrow on the right, which means the graph continues to the right forever. It goes toward positive infinity. If we focus on that part of the graph and look at the x-axis, we see that the part of the graph that's increasing starts at positive 1 and goes to positive infinity. We can write that using interval notation 1 comma infinity or the simple inequality x is greater than 1. There are no other places where the function is increasing, so we're ready to move on to problem 2. Over what intervals of x is the function decreasing? Look at the graph and identify where the function is decreasing. We see that it's decreasing here. We draw our blue guidelines. The first one is very easy to draw, but then where do we draw the second one? We have an arrow on the left-hand side of the graph, so that means this graph must go forever to the left, toward negative infinity. It doesn't matter whether it's going up or down, what matters is that it's going toward the left. If we focus on that part of the graph and look at the x-axis, we see that we go from negative infinity up to positive 1. So we can write that interval using interval notation from negative infinity to 1, or the simple inequality x is less than 1. We've now identified the interval of decrease. Question 3 asks over what intervals of x the function is constant. We look at the graph for a flat horizontal section. There are none, therefore there are no intervals where the function is constant. Let's end today's lesson with an example for you to try. Here is the graph of a function. We want to find the intervals where the function is increasing, decreasing, and constant. Please pause the video here and come back when you're ready to compare answers. Let's compare answers. In this graph, we begin by increasing, and then decreasing, and then increasing again. We notice that there are arrows on the ends of the graph. 
which means we have to add our negative infinity and positive infinity to the x-axis. We're now ready to answer our questions. The first question, over what intervals of x, is the function increasing? We see that the function is increasing in two different spots on the graph. Let's start with the one on the left. We begin by drawing our blue guidelines. The first guideline is easy to draw, but where does the other guideline go? Well, there's an arrow on the graph on the left-hand side, which means the graph continues to go to the left. We look at our x-axis, and we see that that interval is from negative infinity to negative 2. We write that using interval notation, or a simple inequality. The second interval is over here. The first guideline is very easy to draw, but where does the second guideline go? Well, the graph has an arrow on the right, and therefore the graph continues to the right toward positive infinity. We focus on the part of the graph that we're interested in, and we look at the x-axis. The interval is from zero to positive infinity. We write our interval using interval notation, or as a single inequality. The second question asks over what intervals of x the function is decreasing. We begin by looking at the graph and identifying where that is. We draw our guidelines, which are very easy to draw this time, and focus on the part of the graph that we're interested in. We look at the x-axis and see that the interval is from negative 2 to 0. We can write that using interval notation or a single compound inequality. We've now identified where the function is decreasing. The last question asks over what intervals of x the function is constant. We look at the graph to find a horizontal flat section, but we don't see any. There are no intervals where this function is constant. So now you know everything you need to know in order to write the intervals where a function is increasing, decreasing, and constant whether or not it has arrows on the end. It takes a little bit of practice, but with some practice you can be very good at it. Remember, you can learn more about functions in Mr. Dory's Algebra Handbook, available at www.dorypublications.com.